Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Tim McLean. I'm one of the senior lead guides here at Mike Wigley Heli Skiing, and I'm joined this evening with Kyle McCarthy, who's the general manager, business uh, direction for Atomic Canada. And uh, we're really excited to be partnered with Atomic here at Mike Wigley Heli Skiing. It's a partnership that's gone back to the mid '80s, and uh, I actually pulled out of the basement one of the original Atomic. Uh, it, it was the Fat Boy or the Powder Plus, but this really helped to shape heli skiing in North America. Uh, really meant that a lot of people could come skiing. Prior to this ski, we were on narrow waisted uh, 70 mil skis, um, and this really changed who could be here, uh, the skiing they could do, and injury prevention. But taking from this technology, Kyle, we've seen a huge expansion of where Atomic's yep. going. And I'm just wondering if you can talk to us about the vision you see as Atomic moves forward. I think the biggest vision that we've had is we've become a very consumer-centric brand. Our goal is to uh, really listen to the end consumer. We do a lot of focus groups. We work with the consumers, the stores, and really trying to figure out what works in every market. We want to make sure that the skis that we're developing don't only make sense to us, but they make sense to the end user. If it doesn't make sense for the end user, then why are we making this ski? So trying to find technologies that are gonna bring more people to the mountain, make their experience better, and allow them to experience the sport of skiing the way it should be, which is with a smile on their face. Great. Well, leading in perfectly to my next couple of questions. So we're gonna talk a little bit about bindings, a little bit about skis, and a little bit about boots, and then we'll talk about just powder skiing. Perfect. One of the things I want to maybe discuss with you is a little bit about the technology. Everybody talks about rocker yeah. and everybody talks about their skis are gonna be rockered. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the rocker technology that Atomic's using and, and how, you, uh, how we can translate that into powder performance? I mean, we have basically, and you guys are getting a sneak preview of what's gonna be coming a year from now. All the products on the table, aside from this bad boy, <laughs> are products that are gonna be- We built be rocker into this ourselves. Part of our 12, 13, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Rocker used to be called a warranty ski, by the way, it was bent. Um, all the products you're seeing right now are based, on, are from our 1213 collection. So they're all the latest and greatest skis. This ski, for instance, was skied by my guy today, and he was the first guy to ski it in Canada with this setup, which is a re you know, really exciting for us and really exciting for me to see how the ski worked in this environment. But the biggest thing that we talk about Rocker, we have three distinct Rocker technologies moving forward. We have something that we're gonna call a Peace Rocker, we have an all mountain rocker and we have a powder rocker. Because all rocker really does is it, you know, from a basic perspective, it takes the ski and raises the ski from a contact point, moves the contact point further back. The ability in a powder rocker, we have, we have a lot of rise in a ski like the automatic where the rocker engages very early, goes very far back in the ski. This is gonna help flotation. In a powder environment, we're really looking at flotation and ease of use. But when we go to a more all mountain rocker, our goal is not just for a little bit of flotation and a little bit of what I'd call performance in mixed snow where the ski or the shovel of the ski will get above all the beat up snow that you ski when you're skiing in resort. We all have great powder days in resort, but you know, in Whistler it lasts 45 minutes before it's tracked out. We wanna make sure that the ski itself is gonna get above all the chunks and bumps and the nastiness. And not only that, but as skis get wider, we still have to take that basic principle of skiing and move the ski from edge to edge. So if we can use early rise or rocker to take the contact point, which is the, you know, traditionally has always been the widest part of the ski at the shovel here, use rocker to move that contact point back. So when we have to take a ski, a wide ski, move it from edge to edge, it gives us the ability to take a narrower platform, move it edge to edge. What that means is a quicker transition, more safety, more stability, and a more solid feel underfoot. Certainly for us here at Mike Wigley's, where the snowfall lasts 45 days, <laughs> but we're still in the trees lots and we want to have a really uh, maneuverable, turnable ski. And that's the, the revelation I've seen with the rocker ski. Although I think, you know, the original designs were uh, for expert skiers, it's translated so well into the weekend powder skier, the once a year heli skier. It's really, it's really revolutionized who can be in powder and, and how well people ski in powder. As we've worked with Rocker, we've really figured out that it's not only for the expert skier, that Rocker is applicable for all levels of skiing. And it, you know, in general, one of the things for an intermediate or, you know, advanced skier is it just makes the ski so much more steerable on in soft snow or on powder snow. So, you know, we really found that the same technology that's going to help a pro skier, you know, 
to sort of have first ascents and really have these epic runs that you're going to see in the next ski movie, that same technology makes the ski easier to use for the end consumer. That's excellent. So we have three skis here that will be in, in next year's Atomic yeah. line. The Ritual, the Automatic, automatic and, and the Millennium. Yeah, and this, this I'm really excited about. If you're, if you uh, were heli skiing 20 years ago, the number of women heli skiing was uh, really small. Um, but that's changed markedly, and uh, along the lines, Atomics have addressed that as well. Yeah, we, you know, this is a new ski. We really address that, uh, the fact that we know that there's a lot more women, or aggressive skiing women, in the marketplace right now. And we needed a tool for them to have their own specific powder ski. We didn't want to have to put them on a unisex ski, put them on a, one of our bent shuttlers, or even the automatic. We wanted to give them their own tool for their own personality, to get out on the mountain because a lot of what we do in skiing and developing skis is making sure that for the, the end consumer we have the right product and to tell a woman who's an aggressive great skier that she has to go on a quote men's ski that's not right so the millennium is is based on or designed off of one of our more popular molds or popular skis called the blog so it's 110 millimeters underfoot full rocker tip and tail and it's going to be a great great powder ski for women and and we were talking before, Kyle, you were talking about traditional camber underfoot. Yes. So all these skis have a traditional camber, they're not full rocker. Every one of our skis from Atomic will always have traditional camber under the foot. Yeah. Because it's that traditional camber in a ski that gives the ski the side cut yeah. and ability to work. Great. So when we're in bottomless snow, you're, we don't necessarily think about side cut. But as soon as the snow becomes marginal, you can feel any bit of a solid base. We need that side cut to engage to help us steer a ski. That ski that you've put away now, yeah. if you think about this one, this probably had a turning radius in the neighborhood of 50 meters. So to make the ski turn and come across the hill when the snowpack was lower was very, very hard. Our new skis here, the turn radius is anywhere in around 18 to 19 meters. So think about how easy that ski is to turn, especially when we get into skiing trees. Much more maneuverable and easier to ski and way less effort. Wow, that's great. We're going to move on now. Uh, two skis um, for next year in the men's line or the unisex line, I guess, mm -hmm. would be the Ritual and the Automatic. And yes. maybe you can just talk a little bit. This is more for uh, guys like me with a little heli belly, right? <laughs> yeah. So we'll start with so, the... So we'll start, I mean, I'm going to start with the Automatic. Okay, good. Because the Automatic itself is a um, is an evolution of skis that we've designed. I'm going to say this is sort of the next step from the Bent Shetler. This ski, the two key designers in this ski were Dana Flair, a great Canadian free skier, films with TGR, and Sage Catabriga Loza. They needed a ski that was a little bit more rigid. They wanted, you know, those two guys, they, they, they don't necessarily play in the mountains. They're skiing, they're charging really, really hardcore, hey, Alaska peaks, very, very steep, and they, want, they wanted a little bit more performance in the ski. So the one thing that we did to the automatic is we still have an amazing amount of tip rocker, tons of rocker here, the same thing you'd see in the blog or the Atlas or the same or the, uh, the, ac the access, but we really minimize the amount of tail rock in this. And the reason for that is that these guys are skiing high speed and they're still, they want performance from the ski. They want that old school feeling. I'm not gonna say a racing, but they want to feel the ski behind them as they're carving through what could be wind blown yeah. or what could be you know, icy or hard to pack conditions. They want stability. So we minimize the amount of rock in this ski. Still 117 underfoot, lots of flotation, lots of width. But really, you know, really trying to get a performance orientation towards the powder ski. Excellent. So this would be our most performance oriented powder ski that we're going to offer next year. Super. And, and then the next one would be the Ritual, which did get skied today by one of the guys. Yes. He uh, said to, mentioned to me that it was a great ski, so maybe we can talk a little bit about that. First ski day in Canada First, Ritual. Yeah, it was my guy who was uh, fortunate enough to be the skier today. Bill, thank you very much. We, we're getting told to move over a little bit. We're good. So the ritual here, it's from a new family. It's a new collection that we're going to offer in 1213. It's called the Vantage Collection. And this is what we're going to call basically our new all-mountain family. This is a ski that can be skied in and out of resort. The ritual itself, the Vantage Ritual, is 103 underfoot. And I just want to build a few you know, quick comments on your experience, first guy skiing it in Canada. Well, I have quite a privilege. We started off skiing higher in the uh, treeline alpine, so it was windblown. It was almost firm to start off with, and then it started getting soft. Ski great, 
turn, short radius, longer radius, and then we started getting into, into about this much powder at the deepest, and it worked on the, the firmer stuff, and it worked real nice, and it was a fun, playful ski. Good all around. Good all around, easy yeah. skiing, but yet you could power it a little bit and make it turn. So. It was just a, a pleasure to be on it. Great. And, and that's what I like to hear, because the whole idea with this series is that we want to make this ski. Obviously, not everybody has the luxury of skiing day in, day out in a helicopter. So we need to make a ski that's going to have great performance for us to, you know, in, environment, in an environment like this where we're skiing powder and, you know, we don't, want to, we don't want to lose anything. But we want to be able to take this ski home to our resort, get on a lift and have as much fun on it inbounds on either hard pack, groomed, mixed snow, or the occasional powder day we get in resort, and have it, you know, and have one tool. We don't, I don't want to make people buy three skis right. for everything they do. Yeah. And Excellent. I think you know, based on your experience today, seeing your ski, it looks like so far you know we've hit a home run and it's gonna, it's doing what we want it to do. Yeah, I would, I would take this back to hometown Whistler and give it a, give it a run for its money. Oh, that's right. great. Excellent. So you were also. Billy, you also skied on the new binding, the new atomic tractor yeah. binding. And that was a that was a, a pleasure. I made these guys. You know, we had variable weather. We had we so we decided to to take it across the flats and I broke some trail. I think that's called missing the landing. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we went past it. Okay. So I decided I'd give it a quick try, and I never stepped out of it. I just clicked up and skated across the flats and it was just a, a, a pleasure and then I was really apprehensive about how the snow was going to stick <laughs> underneath Yes. and I flicked, it, flicked back the, the walk, out of walk mode and I was told okay we have to give it a good stamp and I just touched it down and it was it stuck Locked right in. down it was just a real quick easy easy from from uphill to downhill mode just Excellent. real one step easy to do. great thanks billy you're welcome Tim. yep see you in the mountains thank you thank you so on that note maybe kyle you can talk about wh where this new bindings come from uh, the concept for atomic and who you're appealing to. I know that the guides are going to be on this yeah. binding next year. We're really excited about that. We, we want to be mobile in the mountains. Um, on the off chance, you might miss a pickup. <laughs> doesn't happen often, hopefully. But uh, it does provide a, an added measure of safety for mobility. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the tracker. Well, I think the biggest thing with our new, with the new atomic tracker, or the, the reason that we've sort of developed this binding is that there is so much of an emphasis now when people get into the backcountry. We all know, and lift lines are growing in certain resorts but we also we see this big influence from backcountry touring and not everybody's going to want to do a multi-day tour sure but to have that you know i'm going to say the heli experience for free to get off the top of a lift and be able to get that extra 500 feet that nobody else in the resort is going to get that's what really this binding is designed for so the ability of the tracker to you know to, to allow people to get to i'll say unskied terrain is yep. really what we wanted to do um, and the marketplace for touring bindings is growing substantial. It, it, it's mind-boggling how quickly right. this has just come on in the marketplace and it is growing. The biggest difference with this binding compared to what's on the market now, or the mainstream market now, is that you don't have to get out of your binding. You don't have to click out, take your boot out of the system to engage the walk mode. You simply take the lever at the back with your ski pole, flick it back, and the binding's going to release. So you're not going to worry in an environment, say like this, of worrying about snow clock. You're not going to yep. get snow on the bottom of your boot, have to step back in and worry about clearing your, your boot sole. Then the other nice thing is when you want to go back in, you simply, like Bill said, you just step down fairly lightly and you're going to be completely engaged in what is a very solid alpine binding. One of the things that we wanted to design into the binding is that some of our competitors, the, the binding itself is so focused on going uphill is you don't have that sense of security sure. in a binding system. This is a 7 to 16 den binding and it will perform 100% like our 8 to 16 den race binding. Wow. This binding is, you will never have to worry about coming out of it early. Set to the and that was a really a concern of a lot of guys touring. They were going to you know, move into bigger lines, trying to get a binding that uh, would, would provide uh, ultimate retention, mm -hmm. uh, but also be walkable. And I think yeah. uh, you really hit it out of the park with it, the tracker. There's always going to be a sacrifice in backcountry touring. Sure. There's, 
those who who relish the uphill and they want the lightest, easiest possible binding yep. to have that experience. And then there are those who relish the downhill. They only go up because they want to go down. Right. And with the products that have been on the market up until now, those who wanted to mostly go down, whose goal has been to go down. They're only going up because they want this experience, they yep. want the run. They've always had to sacrifice performance and maybe change choosing terrain that's not as aggressive as they want to ski right. because they don't trust their equipment. Sure. What we want to give them is a binding that allows them to trust their equipment and they can ski any run they want yeah. with 100% security. Excellent. Now, I know that uh, today it was heli skied on just like any old uh, yep. Alpine binding. So that's a really good testament. And again, Bill never came out of his bindings. It was good. Uh, wow, that is great. <laughs> and another example, just we were doing this earlier. That's it. You're in. Yeah. So that's a phenomenal uh, advantage with this binding. Um, Want to cover last uh, in our little uh, technology travels here, some of the boots and I, I for someone like myself with horrible feet, I'm really excited to see some of the uh, advancements in the live fit technology that we talked about. Maybe you can explain some of the boots for us. Atomic, you know, we've worked really hard in the last four or five seasons to evolve boot technology. And boot technology, not just from a performance standpoint, but from an end user standpoint. I mean, the biggest thing, the biggest barrier, I think, to our sport that stops people from engaging in it or growing in it is the comfort of the boot. People get into ski boots and they generally think they're uncomfortable, they're hard to use, and that's going to stop them from you know, participating in the sport, and we need more participation. One of the boots that we came out with um, a season or two, se sorry, two seasons ago is the original Atomic Live Fit. And what Live Fit means is it, it's just like the name sounds, is that the fit itself is ever evolving. We've, we've applied two elastomer sections, on each, well, one on each side of the boot, two total, on what are generally the hot spots. Most people, if they get their boots punched, if they have an issue with fit, and I know I've seen your feet, yeah. <laughs> it's generally gonna be what we call the fifth met metatarsal on the outside of the foot by the, by the small toe. And as you can see what I'm doing here, this is now a completely flexible area. This will automatically adapt to your foot, just like slipping on a nice pair of leather shoes or a new yep. pair of shoes. This is gonna completely adapt to your foot on both sides of the boot. And this is what we're gonna call, this is our comfort slash performance range boot. This is really our comfort boot. The last itself is 102 to 106. Wide, comfortable, easy to use. Warm. Warm. Yeah. And that's life. Fit. That really looks like the perfect heli ski boot. It provide, it's going to provide the performance that uh, people are looking for to be out all day, uh, you know, skiing powder, but also the comfort. And that's, yeah. you know, uh, a big issue for our clients to be comfortable all day, to have warm feet. I think that boot's going to be a, a, a huge hit. And I think one thing that people forget is that, you know, just like we are, our feet are living, they're evolving. And throughout the day, depending on your hydration, how much red wine you drank the night before, <laughs> your feet change. You could get up one day, come here fully hydrated, not had a drink, ski, go to dinner, bottle or two of red wine, get up the next morning, if boots feel like some, it's a different boot. So the goal here with Life, I mean, that's a big thing too, is that this boot will constantly adapt to your foot Great. throughout your ski day. It's always going to fit. It's going to change. It's going to adapt to your foot. Also, if you're skiing in transitional weather, if it's cold up top or warmer at the bottom, we know that our feet will change a little bit depending on temperature yeah. as well. So this boot will always fit. But we also wanted to transition Life. We, we said, well, this is a great, what we'd call intermediate or well, not necessarily high-end recreational option, but what about the narrower foot person or the more performance-oriented person who wants that tight, tight fit? So coming for 1213 is a new technology called Live Fit Performance. We've mo moved Live Fit Performance to a 98 millimeter chassis. 98 millimeters is sort of that reference width for performance-oriented boots. Yep. But we've taken Live Fit and we've only put it on the outside, the lateral side. Because this is generally that hot spot you get when you're trying a boot. Yeah. We've left the medial, the inside part of the boot, completely alone. Because this is that performance part of the boot. This is where you want maximum performance. But the new Life Fit perform our new Life Fit technology here will really allow that performance skier to have the best fit throughout the whole day as well. Wow. And Excellent. minimize the amount of boot work we have to do. And, and there's a, a walk mode as yeah. well. This boot is this boot is called the tracker. So we have a whole tracker series, men's and women's, which is a releasable, we call it the power control release or a releasable backbone. This gives us a walk mode. 
and is our performance touring boot. Excellent. And again, this boot is not designed for that multi-day lightweight tour. This is the boot that's designed for the guy that, the guy or the girl whose primary goal is enjoying the downhill portion Excellent. of that backcountry experience. Wow. So this line looks like it's going to be the, the optimal uh, setup for anyone wanting to be uh, backcountry skiing or heli skiing. Let's I just, hope so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. I know one of the guides is on a live fit boot ranting and raving about it already. Let's just talk about the future for Atomic and where you see Atomic going. I know you mentioned that it's uh, very much consumer driven now. Um, where do you see the future of Atomic? I know you've really, for many, many years, Atomic has driven the race market, but mm -hmm. it really looks to me like they've taken uh, a serious um, direction towards a free ski market, the powder market. Um, maybe talk about that quickly. I think the biggest thing Atomic's done, as a, and as we look to the future, everything I've heard, seen, is that we're going to continue doing is we're going to we're, we're consumer centric, like I said before. The race market is still very, very important in Europe. Racing drives the European ski market. Yeah. However, we've taken a hard look at the North American market and we have a huge focus on the North American market and it's almost like if you look at our whole catalog we have two product lines. We have a European specific or a European collection that's available for everybody yeah. but then they will also have the other half of the collection that's North American driven and I think our goal is to continue to, to grow organically. We, you know we cannot we, we can't define where we're going to be three years from now. All we can say is that we're going to listen to the consumer. Because to try to push that, okay, this is where we want to be. This is the ski I see for 2016, 2017. Well, that's a, you can't do that because yeah. you don't know what the consumer's going to want. What, what's the consumer going to want? What's the consumer going to need? We keep trying to evolve technologies. Our goal is always to make skiing easier and more pleasurable for the end consumer. We want more people to enjoy the sport. Excellent. So our goal is gonna to be to progress our production, pro progress our products to a point where we can have everybody enjoying the product and enjoying the sport. What that looks like five years from now, we're not gonna know. But the goal is gonna to be to make sure that we keep engaging the consumer using guys you know, like you, using Mike Wigley's as a, as a platform for R&D discussions, what do we need to do and how do we need to do it, and also going to our local ski hills and local dealers and making sure that we're listening to the consumer. Well, what I've seen certainly uh, this week from Atomic, I think the consumer is going to be not only excited, they're going to be blown away by the performance. Final discussion on skiing, powder skiing, mm -hmm. anything you want to tell us? Do it. Yeah. Come out here and have fun. Excellent. Because there's nothing like it. Kyle, thanks so much. Cheers.